Um, there, there was some head right there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes comes into the mix. Very creamy. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, we were hoping, right? I'm expecting something thick and rich. No. No. Ah. You gotta make sure you get your, yourself plenty, okay. right? I gotta get my fill. <laughs> yeah. You can't have it all, right? You have right. to sacrifice something. In this one, I would say they are sacrificing head. Ooh. Gotta focus, oh, Jay, focus. Oh, 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 oh. Looks like motor oil, actually. I still expect more, though. Husband and wife, not brother or sister, or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. who knows, but. It'd be interesting to, to do a side-by-side. -side. Yes. St. Louis, Missouri. Second shift, not to be confused with shift one. Night shift. You never know. Hi everyone. I'm Janet. I'm Jason. We're Gumbo, Gumbo Mud. Mud. We're here for dark beer. And today we have from St. Louis, Missouri. This is intentionally indulgent second shift, not to be confused with shift one. And this is from Perennial Artisan yeah. Al's. Yeah. Le St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. 11.5%. Mm -hmm. Big one. Yeah. So they are calling this an American Imperial Stout. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, American Stouts are the heaviest, and obviously an yes. Imperial is even heavier. So. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting something thick and rich and, oh, yeah. and tasty. So uh, uh, interesting can. Uh, pick this up at uh, San Diego Wine and Beer. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, a lot of chocolate. It says chocolate, coffee, chocolate, and vanilla beans. So interesting. The can's very earthy looking to yeah. me. Like the yeah. colors are all very earthy and yeah. um, like the same kind of earthy palette. So yeah. not that that is, you know, <laughs> uh, indic indicative of what the beer is going to taste like, but I'm just making note that it's a very earthy color palette, <laughs> right? There you go. You never know. Yeah. Okay. so. Um, again, labeled as an American Imperial Stout, but they say it's a Tira, uh, the, the brewery itself says it's a Tiramisu style stout. Wow. Tiramisu style stout brewed with our best bud, second shift brewing, uh, inspired by the classic Italian dessert from the hill where second shift calls home. Intentionally indulgent was fermented on top of luscious chocolate sauce and steeped on cocoa nibs, vanilla beans, and Colombian coffee beans. Yeah, didn't you say there was a uh, one of these uh, that were, that's not second shift? Yes, just intentionally indulgent. Okay. And then second batch uh, was called intentionally indulgent second shift. Because they collaborated with second shift. Exactly. I wonder why they collaborated on the second one. I don't know. Yeah. The the um, can artwork is the same. The yeah. ABV is the same. Just the second batch was um, in collaboration with Second Shift. And it just says Second Shift right here is, right. The, is the only difference on the can. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just a brief wow. overview of the brewery itself. Their philosophy is to brew beer with an adventurous craft drinker in mind, uh, focused on handcrafted small batches of beer using seasonal organic ingredients whenever possible. And their beers are primarily influenced by Belgian and American craft styles, um, but the addition of premium ingredients such as fruit, spices, yeast sometimes comes into the mix. Yeah, hopefully not in their darks. Exactly. <laughs> hopefully in their other beers. Right? Maybe a little spice, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the co-founders uh, Phil and Emily Wymore um, started the brewery, and Phil is actually the brewmaster there. Mm -hmm. Um, and he actually brewed formerly for Goose Island. We haven't reviewed a Goose Island, but Goose Island is famous. A lot of barrel aged stuff, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of big beer, big stouts. So uh, I can't wait to get our hands on some, some Goose Islands. I've had a few, always good. And uh, so yeah, they're in Chicago and uh, he was the brewer there in 2006 and uh, uh, eventually got promoted to oversee the barrel aging program, um, which Goose Island's famous for their barrel aging, mm -hmm. barrel aging beers. And uh, yeah, he left there in 2009 and became the head brewer at Half Acre Beer Company. And then while in Chicago, he studied brewing at the world-renowned Seibel Institute, nice. which we've talked about before, yep. and then returned to Missouri uh, with his family in 2010 to build perennial artisan artisanal ales. <laughs> artisanal ales, yeah. I would assume that Emily 
uh, is the wife. It didn't say that on her yeah. um, her bio. It just said coming soon. So it just said that she is co-founder. I would think they're husband and wife, not brother or sister, or mm -hmm. you know, yeah. who knows. But um, anyway, I, we don't have much on her. So yeah, and you saw they had a lot of beers, right? They did on the website. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of darks, or just a lot of beers. Period. They produce a lot. Uh, they had a fair amount of darks, more more so than most breweries. So it would yeah. be you know somewhere that you and I would appreciate. Yeah, and I'd love to go. I haven't been to Missouri, and that's obvious, that's actually one of the uh, states I haven't been that I really want to go uh, mm -hmm. for the Ozarks, and and just the whole area looks really cool that I want to explore. So uh, to have them there, yeah, that'd be great. Go visit. I've spent a lot of time there. Yeah, I'm from Chicago area. And so I spent tons of time in Missouri, especially fishing. So yeah. uh, I've, you know, been to the St. Louis Arch and uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, fun. Yes. Lots right. of family vacays there. Yeah. So you ready? Ready. Let's try it. Let's try a second shift. I'll let you pour this one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I wish we could. Uh, I wish we had the original one so we could compare this one to um, them collaborating with Second Shift. It'd be interesting to, to do a side by side. Yes. You know. So I can say here it says indulge by March eleventh, two thousand twenty-one. So. Oh. I'm assuming this is a pretty fresh batch. <laughs> indulge, indulge by March eleventh. Yeah, of next well, year. So. Two thousand twenty-one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, because so. I was like, it's May now here so Ooh. gotta focus oh, 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 look how dark I, can, I can't see through it as you're pouring it it's really dark wow <laughs> it's what you expect from 11 and a half percent wow looks like motor oil actually it does. wow that is right i think i always short you a little always you gotta make sure you get your yourself plenty oh, right i gotta get my fill <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> Wow, that was dark. Yeah. That looked like motor oil coming out. I'm getting um, some aroma already. Are you? I just, you know, I can't quite um, put my finger on it yet because I've not brought it up. So yeah, I'm getting something though. So what about appearance? <laughs> Very dark. It looks a little super dark. Looks a little flat. Yeah, it went flat pretty quick. Uh, the head did look nice at first, and then just went flat pretty quick. Yeah. But we've been having that a lot in a lot of our heavier beers lately. Yes. Um, I don't know if they're just so heavy, <laughs> they can't retain. Uh, that's what head, I think. Right? I think it's hard to uh, accomplish, you know, great head and lacing when you have just a heavy, high percentage ABV. Right. That's, you know, I know nothing yeah. about brewing, but that's kind of our experience in yeah. reviewing that you can't, you can't have it all, right? You have right. to sacrifice something. So, yeah. in um, in this one, I would say they are sacrificing head. Mm -hmm carbonation, lacing. So as, as the, the head's hanging on a little bit though. It's just t small. Yeah. Yeah. I still expect more though. Um, yeah. As much as I, I think the body looks great. I'm a little disappointed in the lack of lacing, carbonation, head. So yeah. I'm going to start with a four. Okay. I am going to give it a 4.5. Okay. Because I really liked how it looked coming out of the can. It mm -hmm. was, it's one of the darkest beers I've seen. I can only think of two or three other beers that are, were that dark. That looked like motor oil coming out. So super yeah, dark. It did. Um, there, there was some head. It dissipated quick, but it's still kind of hanging on a little bit. And there's like a, like a little film over it mm -hmm. that's just kind of staying there. But to me, it looks really good. So not quite a five, just because probably the lack of lacing and the head dissipated really quick. But... Uh, I, I really like the way it looks, so okay. I give it a 4.5. So, aroma. Hmm. Yeah, Tierra Me Sue. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Dang it. Um, a bitter chocolate. Of course. Some dark fruit. Of course. Slightest bit of smokiness, like very, very slight. Right. Um, a little bit of vanilla. That's about it for me. Yeah, well, that's that's a lot. <laughs> it is. It is a lot, but yeah. I, I think I was expecting something more dessert-like, you know, more tiramisu-like. Yeah, we were hoping, right? Yeah, you just don't get any tir tiramisu. You don't get any mm -hmm. sweetness. It's it has a good it has a good scent to it. It does. I'm not getting all those flavors like you're getting. Mm. Luckily, I'm not getting the the fruit is it's just the fruit and the bitterness is so slight, like. It just barely comes out in mine. Mm -hmm. And just a little more smokiness probably than the fruit, like you said, but 
I like it. It's good. It, 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 I just wish it, the aromas were pumped, and I wish I, yeah. could, I could smell some some form of tiramisu. So yes. So what do you give aroma? Uh, I'm going to stick with a four. Okay. I do like it. Yeah. Um, again, as I mentioned, I was I was expecting more like dessert like qualities or properties, right. which I'm not getting. So yeah. I like what I'm getting, but I was I was expecting like a really sweet, um, you know, baked good dessert. Yeah. Type aroma. Yeah, you know, and also the aroma kind of reminds me of beers that we had in the past where it starts warming. You'll get more of the yes of of the of the flavors and the aroma. But all right, what about taste? Okay, I'm excited. I gave it a four, by the way, for aroma. <laughs> I don't know if I said it or not, but wow. I like it too. So very creamy. Yeah. Yes. Well, eleven and a half. It, we're hoping it should be. I was. It's <laughs> unexpected for me. I don't know. Yeah. Everything smelled very bitter and yeah. Um, yeah. You know, dark fruit, bitter chocolate. So the creaminess mm -hmm. is a welcome surprise for sure. Yeah, I'm not getting the bitterness like you are. It's funny because I, I get a little bit, but not a lot at all. Yeah. Not even cl is it close to tiramisu. No. No. Ah, that's no, not good. No, but it's good. Yeah. Like, I'm not faulting them. Like, I, I would imagine, you know, if you are going to call your beer a specific dessert, like, it's probably very hard to arrive at that. But I do like what I'm getting. Yeah. I think it's it's really smooth, really creamy. Yeah. Um, I don't get the smokiness, which no. I'm grateful for. What, yeah. do you, what do you think? Yeah, it's super creamy. It really uh, creamy. I'm, I got a little bit of the fruit and it dissipated really quick. Mm -hmm. And all I was getting creaminess and I'm getting something sweet. I think it's like a chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not the bitter chocolate, but it's not super sweet chocolate. So I think it's right in the middle of the road where they maybe took the bitter chocolate and just add a little bit of sweetness to it. But it's nice. It's it's a little sweet. I think I have not made tiramisu. I have had it, but yeah. I've not made it, which I actually want to. Um, yeah. But I do think that maybe at the end you dust it with cocoa powder, which again, in its raw state without being uh, mixed with something is, is bitter. It's almost like yeah. um, the baking chocolate. Like if you just dust something with cocoa powder, it's more for the visual. Uh, right aspect of it than the taste but if yeah. you know um tiramisu is heavily comprised of mascarpone cheese so i would think that the cocoa and the mascarpone would combine and make a beautiful thing yeah. so yeah. you know it's all about complementing complementary exactly. flavor so so what do you give taste yeah i'm sorry i took a that's okay i took a baking yeah uh turn on that one i like it i'm gonna stick with the four yeah yeah i i do like it um i'm not really getting the uh, it's very creamy which i would yes very uh, creamy you know which tiramisu is a very creamy thick yeah rich dessert so yeah. i think they accomplished that so a yeah. four yeah i'm gonna give it a four too um i really like this beer <clears throat> what i'm getting is where it's a little off for me is right in the middle is where I get the fruit. And then it goes away and that's it. But it's really creamy and it, it's almost sweet. Like it, it's right there. Mm -hmm. uh, Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little thing floating there, a little land or something. Um, it's so close and, it, and the front end of it's so good. And then I get that little bit of fruit and I think it's gonna be bitter or fruity like a lot of our beers we mm -hmm. get. And it's not, it goes away. And then uh, it's, it stays creamy through the finish. So I like it a lot. So I actually gave it a four. I think if, it, it, if I didn't get the little bit of fruit and it bumped up the sweetness, it'd be a 4.5 or a five for me. Cause I really uh, like, like the creaminess of it. Mm -hmm. So, and we're gonna get to texture here. Texture, yes. man. Man, almost spot on. Yeah, right? the wow. texture. I'm um, I'm at a four point five on that. Like, I really appreciate the texture of this. I didn't I didn't see the texture when it was poured. Um, I did. It was dark. I mean, I could see the darkness, but I couldn't quite gauge yeah. the texture of it. It looked uh, thick. But it's it's just um, you know I would say it's a medium to heavy body. Yeah. A really full. Um, just a really well brewed beer like yeah it's smooth really as could smooth be. yeah like it's yeah 
I really like it. So 4.5 for me. 4.5? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a 5. Nice. I This 11.5, I think it's spot on, and it's a good 11.5. Like mm -hmm. We've had some 12s that sometimes are a little little heavier. They seem, they seem a little heavier than a 12 or, and even a lot less. Man, I love the texture and the body of this beer because it's not too heavy, but it does taste like... 11 11.5 11 somewhere around there it's it like you, you said it has such a creamy body and texture to it mm -hmm. and it has that 11.5 percent feel to it so it yeah does. yeah i give it a five because i really like this i really yeah. love the texture so finish on to the finish i keep drinking mine because i like the finish yeah no i do too um i'm going to go with um i'm gonna go mm. with wow a four on the finish. Um, I really like this beer. Would yeah. have another. Uh, would definitely try other beers from it. Uh, Eleven point five is not for the faint <laughs> of heart, right? Like yeah. it's an, a substantial beer. Yeah, it's. You know, that's you're getting up there in stout ABVs, right? Yes. And the booze is extremely well masked. Like I don't get, I don't get. Uh, you know a boozy scent a boozy aroma the boozy burn going down like it's just it's smooth like i've said all along i've probably if we count if we go back and count how many times did she say smooth yeah, like and creamy yeah i mean it's up there it's just yeah it's really good so uh i'm gonna stick with a four uh again i don't get many of the tiramisu flavors that i'd hope for so that kind of affects my overall uh, finishing number, but four is still yeah. really great. I'm with you. I'm going to give it a four. If I, I really like the finish of this beer, I do get a little, once again, I get a little bit of the, the fruity bitter, but, mm -hmm. it, but it's slight. It's not much at all. And then it's gone, which I love. It finishes nice and dry and then sticky, which all our heavy beers always do. Man, if it just finished a little sweeter, it'd be a 4.5 or a 5 for me because, man, I, I, I like it. I love this beer except for the little slight fruit bitterness, just t t a tinge of it. Yeah. And that's it, man. If it was a little sweet or a little like tiramisu, this would almost be all fives for me. Well, again, so any good. anybody who's had tiramisu, uh, you know, it's kind of a given like fruit does not mm. accompany or complement mm. tiramisu. Yeah. It just, you know, yeah. it just doesn't. So I, yeah. I know that you add the dark fruit to get sweetness into the beer, but yeah. I would, you know, I would recommend, you know, getting your sweetness from other yeah. sources and components. Yeah. yeah. So Janet, what do you give intentionally indulgent night shift? No. Night shift? Second shift. <laughs> I was like, really? No. God, you threw me off. Second shift. Night shift will be the next one, right? <laughs> and then graveyard shift. And then graveyard shift, well, right? That's the same as night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, from perennial artisanal L's. What's your total? Uh, my total was a 4.1 out of 5.0. Um, just a really, really solid yeah. beer. Uh, my highest category was the texture. Like, it was just, yeah. you know, it was hard to beat. I, I just spot on for an 11.5. Everything else was straight fours across the board. Uh, they really just delivered on this beer. The only thing lacking was just a little bit, I would like more of the tiramisu um, ingredients and flavors that, you know, are, yeah. are typical with that dessert. Yeah, ditto for me, yeah. ditto for me. Same exact thing. I gave it a 4.3. Um, Basically, same thing. All fours. Mm -hmm. The texture was was the best. You did go a five on on texture. Yeah, texture. no, it it texture looked it looked amazing. Best. Yeah, it looked dark, and so everything you just said. If it if it just was a little more like tiramisu, especially the Roman taste, mm -hmm. it could be close to all fives for me because I really like this beer, and this is our first one from Perennial, um, so I can't wait to get more of their beers. Right? I'm th I'm thinking too, based on uh, this being our first beer. Uh, we don't. We didn't see anywhere that they were award winners, um, but I would think that they probably have <laughs> some beers up yeah. their sleeve that have won all sorts of awards yeah. and you know accolades and all this great stuff. So yeah, I, I presume yeah, and we're gonna try to find more of their beers. Yeah, around here. Yeah, make a little road trip to <laughs> Mo. Yes, here we yes, come. yeah, definitely want to go to Missouri. So Gumbo Mud Review is a four point two. We both really like this beer a lot. Uh, any beer over four. 
for us. We want to get again and have. So love this beer, uh, first beer from Perennial, and can't wait to try more. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so thank you guys for watching this review. And click the like and share button and share it with everyone. And click the subscribe button for more dark beer reviews. And we are on Instagram, as is everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Gumbo Mud, M U D D. -D. And we always put out our latest uh, YouTube releases along with extra content along the way. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll see you on the next review. Bye. Bye. Bye.